everybody. This is Bishop Darrell Towns. I'm coming to you from Worship, Word, and Praise, the Evangelist and Tabernacle Church Ministry. Praise the name of God. We come to you today on this great, beautiful Sunday. Hallelujah. Just worshiping and praising God. You're listening to a track, praise God, from the head and the late, praise God, uh, Pastor Marie Hayes. Hallelujah, and the Hayes family, standing on the solid rock. Enjoy. solid rock? Are you standing on the solid rock? Is your hand in the hand of the man who can calm the waters? Amen. Praise the Lord. Just want to share a short word with you. Amen. From Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It simply says, Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost since you believe? I want to ask the question, First of all, what is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is the third part of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, in Acts, Matthew 28 and 19, the Greek word of Holy Spirit is pneumonia, meaning a current of air or spirit. So, have you received the Holy Ghost. When did the Holy Ghost come? Well, the Holy Ghost came after the ministry of Jesus. John 14, 26a, he said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will leave you a comforter that will lead you and guide you into all truth, which is the Holy Ghost. So why did the Holy Ghost come? It came, first of all, to teach and remind us of all things. John 14, 26. Then it came to give power to witness. Acts 1 and 8. Or to be a witness. It came to edify. 1 Corinthians 14 and 4. It also gives boldness. Acts 4 and 31. So what is the sign or evidence when one is filled with the Holy Ghost. Take a look at Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And they shall speak in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. So what is the evidence of a person or a believer being filled with the Holy Ghost? It is the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Many folk today sitting in the church saying they got the Holy Ghost, but they don't have a tongue. Praise the name of God. Praise the name of God. Sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise the name of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. So, you must be filled with the Holy Ghost in order to be to have the fullness of salvation. As I said, so many people are sitting in the church today and they have 
not been filled with the Holy Ghost, haven't heard a tongue, their attitude doesn't show that they've got the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, to be filled with the Holy Ghost says that you must speak in other tongues. How shall one receive the filling of the Holy Spirit? Through the laying on of hands, first of all, Acts 19, 1 and 6, and through prayer and fasting. So what is the demonstration of the Holy Ghost? It is the nine gifts of the whole of the Spirit: healing, prophecy, faith, deliverance, discerning of the Spirit, not discernment, y'all, word of knowledge, and wisdom, working of miracles, different tongues. So this is the personality and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. So when should one want to speak in tongues? First of all, you should speak for the for the intercession, intercessory prayer tongue, interceding in the behalf of somebody when you don't know what to pray for. And then for the prophetic. And that's when there is a interpreter in the midst for the edifying of the church. And then, of course, there's a tongue that edifies the believer as he speaks to God. It's for self-edification. Let me conclude by saying that the Holy Spirit is very necessary and vital for the believer. And will only dwell or come upon a sanctified and holy life. There are one baptism, but there are many fillings. The Holy Ghost will not come upon an unclean life. The Holy Ghost will not come upon a life that is not filled with the love of God. So you must be saved sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost to have power to be a witness to have power to lay hands upon the sick to have power to cast out devils you need the Holy Ghost if you say you're saved and you have not received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues you need the Holy Ghost. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. For the Bible says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Well, I'm here to declare to you today that you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray in just a second. And I want you to join me in this prayer for those who are not filled with the Holy Ghost. But before I pray that prayer, those you are listening to me, I want you're not saved, don't have, now don't know Jesus. I want you to, to pray this prayer with me, Father. In the name, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I accept your son, Jesus, as my personal Savior. I confess my sins to you. Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Make me a new creature. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to write me at our email address, Worship Word and Praise. Evangelistic Tabernacle Church Ministries. I'm sorry, Worship Word and Praise, Evangelistic Tabernacle at Outlook.com. Write me, email me, and let me know that you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want to get some pertinent information 
some very important information into your hands. Now you that are saved and you have not deal with the Holy Ghost, I want you to lay your hands upon your own head and say this, Lord Jesus, fill me with the Holy Ghost and let me speak in other tongues. I need the power. Receive it now in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to a time of worship. And remember, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. Don't drown. Don't sing. Tie a knot in the echo. And hold on. Stand on. Right here on Spreaker Radio. Incline your ear to my words, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. And do it them, for faith without corresponding actions is dead. I will show you to whom he is like. Jesus says that he is like a man which built a house, and digged down deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Let's build our lives upon Jesus, for he is our solid rock.